Welcome, welcome back, Debbie. Welcome in. Mary is responsible. It's and just a shoe. Get to have your shoe from the next one. I could have a pair of those shoes. Next one here is hang out one single to open an office or business, especially in a profession. Example, Constanza, the doctor. The doctor decided to hang out his shingle as soon as he finished the medical school. Just what the doctor ordered. Just what the doctor ordered. Ordered. Exactly what is needed or wanted. Exactly what is needed or wanted. A nice hot bath was just what the doctor ordered after my long day at work. Exactly what is needed or wanted. Kick a habit. Kick a habit. Okay. Kick a habit. To break or stop a bad habit. Uh, Sapna, would you like to read the next one? Example, kick a habit. The man. <clears throat> Constanza, the man? The man used to smoke, but he was able to kick the habit. And he was able to kick the habit, able to break or stop that bad habit. That bad habit. Nothing but skin and bones. Nothing but skin and bones. Meaning to be, to be very thin or emaciated. Emaciated. The young man was nothing but skin and bones when he turned from the long camping trip. From the long camping trip. An ounce, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It is easier to prevent something bad than to deal with the results. This is this one is 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 an idiom, but it's also a proverb. It also it's also a proverb. An ounce to, of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Example, uh, Constanza. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And I decided to stay home and rest rather rather than go out in the cold with my sore throat. Mm. My sore throat. Rub salt in someone's lounge. Rub salt in someone's wound. Or wound is the same as in you, okay, or a hurt in your skin or on your skin or body. To deliberately, to deliberately make someone's unhappiness or shame. Nice. Or misfortune worse. My supervisor rubbed salt in my wound when he continued to criticize, criticize me for my mistake. Mm -hmm. To deliberately make someone's unhappy unhappiness or shame or misfortune worse. A taste of one's own medicine. A taste of a taste of one's own medicine. The same treatment that one that one gives to other to others. Usually this has a negative meaning, okay? It has a negative meaning. Our boss, uh, Constanza. Our boss got a taste of his own medicine when people began to treat him badly like he treats others. Like he treats others. A taste of one's medicine. A taste of one's of one's own medicine that one gives to other usually this has a negative meaning, okay? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Mm -hmm. A taste of one's own medicine. Let's move to the next page. There we go. Black and blue, black and blue. 
bruised, showing signs of having been physically harmed. Black and blue, showing signs of having been physically harmed. So my arm was black and blue after falling down the stairs. <laughs> black and blue. Break out in something, break out in something. To begin showing a rash or other skin disorder. So this is a phrasal verb and we usually use for, these ones are for, for body, for our body, okay? So break out in something. I broke out in a rash after eating the shrimp at the restaurant, especially, you know, someone who is, who has allergies, you know, who has allergies, they break out in rash a lot. Break out in rash. In rash. Break out in a rash. rash. In a rash. Don't forget to use the article a rash. Break out in a rash. Okay. In a. In a. Okay. In a rash. Flare up, once again, the word flare, this phrasal verb here, this is a phrasal verb. Flare up to begin again some way. An illness or disease. My mother's skin problem flared up. Flared up. A sudden, a sudden, sudden, sudden begin, you know, sudden begin to uh, be or become illness. Okay, this one is for body. Flared up when she started to use the new ham soap. The new ham soap. Get a black eye. Get a black eye to get a bruise or darkened eye after being hit or after bumping into something. Get a Get a black eye. To get a bruise or darkened eye after being hit, being hit or after bumping into something. The boy got a black eye when he fell in the ground. The boy got a black eye when he fell in the ground. Kick in one's neck. Kick in one's neck. A cramp in one's neck that causes pain. I woke up this morning with a kick in my neck. In my neck. A cramp. A cramp. A cramp in one's neck, in your neck, in his neck, in her neck. That causes pain. Pain. A kick in one's neck. Welcome in, Nilo. Welcome in. Good to have you here. Okay, next one is split up. Split up. Split up. Split up something or spit something up. The definition, the meaning is to throw something up, okay, like vomit, to throw out, okay, so to, or you can say to throw up, to vomit something. The dog spit up the button that he had, <laughs> swallow, spit up, spit up something, spit. Spit up something. Now the next one is splitting headache. A splitting headache is a, it's a terrible headache. You, a splitting headache. You, uh, we, uh, who ha who has a splitting headache, have to go to the hospital quickly. Of course, it might might uh, have to go to the hospital 
quick, okay, quickly, because it's a severe headache. It's a terrible headache you cannot bear. You cannot bear. You cannot bear. You cannot tolerate. As you know, bear is not only a verb. Bear is a, is a noun and it, it is also a verb. To bear something means to tolerate. You know that, Cosenza? Bear. Yes. I cannot bear. I cannot tolerate. Next one, susceptible. Susceptible, susceptible to something. Susceptible to something, susceptible to something means to easily get some kind of illness to likely to become sick with something the young boy is very susceptible susceptible to getting a sore throat susceptible susceptible to getting a sore throat Mental condition and emotions. First one here is breakdown. Breakdown here means we are just uh, practicing here some uh, phrasal verbs and idioms, especially for exams, uh, Milo, and everyday English as well. Okay. Now the theme here is mental condition or in, and emotions. Breakdown, to lose control of one's emotions, to have a nervous collapse, a nervous collapse. Example, Constanza, you can read the example. The woman broke down while the lawyer questioned her at the trial. Her, questioned her. her at the trial. Break out, break out in a cold sweat. Break out in a cold sweat. Break out in a, out in a, out in a cold sweat. To perspire from fever or anxiety. Perspire from fever or anxiety. I usually break out in a cold sweat when I have to make a speech. When I have to make a speech. Bundle of nerves, bundle of nerves. A very nervous or anxious person. The woman, the woman is a bundle of nerves after looking after her three children. Bundle of nerves. Burn oneself out. Definition the meaning to become very tired and almost sick from doing something for a long time, for a long time, or from working too hard. After working long hours for many months, the woman finally burned herself out, burned herself out to become very tired. Yeah. Hospital, hospital. Hospital, hospital, hospital. Checkup, an examination of a patient by a doctor. I plan to have my annual checkup next week. Clean bill of health. Clean bill of health. A report or certificate that a person or animal is healthy. My doctor gave me a clean bill of health when I visited him last month clean bill of health clean bill of health couch doctor have you heard about this one couch doctor a couch doctor is a physicalist a physicalist or physiatrist <laughs> physiatrist physiki physi physicalist or physiatrist Sure, physiatrist. Psychiatrist. Yep. 
That's the correct Nicole. Thank you. Who Dutch was, doctor. What's sorry. the spelling? The cat, catch doctor. Catch couch. 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 Yeah. Couch. Couch is also couch is sofa. You know. You know that. Couch. Sit on the couch. He's sitting on the couch. You can say that the couch is also sofa. Usually we say couch in American English more than uh, sofa. Physical analysis, physical analysis, physiatrist. Who puts his patients on couch, on a couch to talk to them? Example, Constanza. Example. The man, the man was sent to it to see a couch doctor because of his many problems. Mm -hmm. Because of his many problems. Let me check that just a second here. I personally love visiting my couch doctor because uh, he knows a lot of cognitive uh, techniques and uh, try to engage my thinking through some uh, of those techniques. Awesome, yeah, yeah I do, I do uh, visit uh, him, my, my, my own doctor as well too. He's, uh, he's, he always you know, gives us you know, some excellent advices and sometimes we he has some you know different ones that really helps us in, in our daily lives in our daily lives it's kind of you know it's kind of uh, a little you know uh, an arm in the lab you know the his uh, you know costings for you know attending a couch doctor but it's really worthy it's really worthy doing that at least once I, I do say once or twice at least twice a year twice a year we should go to a couch doctor yeah you're right about the expensiveness of this kind of treatment but as well as education you can find uh, psychiatrists and psychologists uh, by an aff affordable price. Um, my mom actually is a, a, psycholog a psychologist um, and she has a different kind of patients and just as teachers, we, you, we can charge students from lower to higher oh, depending oh, on the, uh, their possibility to pay for this uh level of education or treatment you can you can tell yeah i can tell I, I, you know you know what uh beyond I, I would say that beyond that beyond your point you're you say uh unfortunately some uh professionals they they do not think that way you know they do not think that way they they have just their their uh one price only that they charge people uh, all over the globe or all around, you know, uh, where they live. But, you know, uh, I think that this mentality is something, you know, that does not, you know, um, give them, you know, a good image, you know, to their profession, professionalism, because we do have to, uh, you know, uh, think about, you know, some, Lots of people uh, around us that they can't afford. They can't afford that price that they they charge some someone, you know. And, and especially nowadays, we have to you know to live, work, and think, uh, you know, all together. It's not it's not something like it's I or or you by yourself, no, we have to think that it's, nowadays it's we. We have to be hands in hands and help one another so we can have a better life. If everyone would have this mentality, the world, the world would be better, better than it is. 
Draw blood to make a welcome in, Bella. Welcome in. Draw blood means to make someone bleed, to get blood from someone. Example, uh, can you read to us, uh, please? Um, let me get here just a second. Uh, Nilo, yeah, you can read to us. Draw blood, the, the example, please. It means to make someone bleed, to get blood from someone. The doctor decided to draw blood from the patient in order to check his blood sugar level. Yeah. Fill a prescription. Fill a prescription. Fill a, fill a prescription to get some medicine from a pharmacy, drugstore, or drugstore, with the orders from a doctor. The man, um, Constanza, the man. The man went to the drugstore to fill a prescription. Awesome, good one. Uh, get a checkup to receive a physical examination from a doctor. This is really an easy one. I go to the doctor every year to get a checkup. Go under the knife. Go under the knife. This is an idiom. Go under the knife. And it means to have an operation in surgery. Okay, to have an operation in surgery. Let me check here the chat section just a moment. Bella, doing. I was just curious, but I can't participate now, but I will be in the next classes all the best. Thank you very much. Wish you the same, Bella. If you can stay with us till the end, I appreciate it. We appreciate that too. Okay, uh, go under the knife. Example, uh, Nilo, go under the knife. Uh, the woman went under the knife at the hospital last evening. Have a physical examination under the knife to get a medical checkup. Uh, our company sent all the employees to have a physical last to have a physical last week. Head shrinker, head, head shrinker. Um, Psychic, I don't like to say this word, psychiatrist. Um, How do you say that, Nilo? How do you say that? Pronounce that. I would say psychiat psychiatrist. 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 Yeah, psychiatrist. Psychiatrist, yeah. This is psychiatrist, psychiatrist. Head shrinker. Uh, Constanza, the example, the man. The man went to see Ed the shrinker after his recent problems at work. Yeah, you know, I, I say head shrinker a lot. I rarely say psychiatrist, psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I rarely say that, you know. I'm used to saying head shrinker a lot. Head shrinker. In Italy too, we say a shrinker, yeah. In surgery, undergoing surgery or doing surgery. The patient was in surgery for several hours this morning. On medication, taking medicine for acute medica medical problem. The woman has been on medication for many years. Run some tests, run some tests tests to do some medical tests on a patient. patient. The doctor decided to run some tests on the patient. Take a sick day, take a sick day. I, by the way, I, I, as you know, I'm gonna send uh, this lesson in PDF to all the, group, the groups, okay? So you, you will have the, the, this, this lesson in PDF so you can read over and over and Okay, it, it also helps us, you know, remember some different, you know, idioms or something, you know, you may face on your CAE exam, especially CAE exams, exam. Take a sick day to be absent from work and still receive pay. I did not feel well yesterday, yesterday, so I decided to take a sick day, a sick day. Take one's medicine to swallow 
one's medicine. The boy had to take his medicine before he went to bed. The boy had to take his medicine before he went to bed. Take someone's pulse. Take someone's pulse. To measure the beats of a person's pulse. Pulse. The doctor took the patient's pulse when she arrived at the hospital. Next one, it takes someone's temperature to measure somebody's body temperature. The nurse took my temperature when I went to the hospital yesterday. All right, now we end this part here for medical. Let me just reveal here. There we go. For medical and health, okay, idioms, idioms for medical and health. And now we, we are going to skip to the next part here. Just a second. Here we go. So let's go to this part right now. We, we will be practicing some um, expressions, phrasal verbs, and idioms, and some structured grammar all together. Okay. And uh, so it will help you increase your skills uh, in English and also it will help you to uh, get a better score on your exam as well. Um, let me see this part here, keywords one of the one. Okay, yeah, let's go to keywords one. Start with keywords. Let's start with keywords one. And the first one here is all told, all told, in total and including everyone or everything, used for time, money, and when you are counting, and when you are counting. Example, Constanza, there. There were six of us, uh, as well as three guides. So. All told, there were nine of us. I imagine it is going to take you three hours. So it all told. All told. So all told means in total. Okay. All told, in total, or including everyone or everything. Especially used for time and money. To be all for something. To be all for something or to be all in favor of something, to totally agree with, to totally, totally agree with. I don't know what you think, but I'm all for private education. As you see here, to be the verb B, yeah. I am, you are. All for something, okay? So I've seen that, uh, to be all in favor of. Yeah, now this is a different one. I'm all for, it's a shortened one. So this one is really, really used, uh, especially in spoken English. But it, it, it's also common for writing, okay? In writing. Okay. I don't know what you think, but I'm all for private education. Next one. When and all of a sudden, when suddenly, when suddenly, 
we were talking about the weather and all of a sudden she burst out crying. Yeah, thank you. Okay, next part here. Count yourself lucky. Consider yourself lucky. Used to say that even though something bad has happened to somebody, it could have been a lot worse. Example. You should count yourself lucky. Your house is not damaged. Damaged. Some people have had to be evacuated from their homes. Something doesn't count. Something is not valid. He's put the ball in the back of the net. No, no, it doesn't count. He was offside. Offside. So something is not valid. Count for. To be regarded as important or valuable. Somebody experience, experience with uh, record, etc., must or will count for something. Surely, the fact that I've never been in trouble uh, before must count for something. Must count for something. At the end of the day, in formal spoken, the most important thing is what you must remember is. What you must remember is, example, Constanza, you? You may disagree with him, but at the end of the day, he's your boss, and as such, you have to respect his decisions. Let's call it a day. Let's stop working. Let's call it a day. We've been painting for seven hours now. Let's call it a day, call it a day, shall we? To have to have a uh, field day, to have a field day, to have the opportunity to criticize and write about, about somebody. When the press finds out that the Minister of Transport have, has been arrested for speeding, they will have a field day. Um, did you get it here? Have a field day. No. Have, have an opportunity to criticize, especially write, criticize and write about um, about like somebody. A, mm -hmm. Like a bad review. Yeah, like a bad review, a bad report, a bad report, a bad news. Write a bad news about somebody. To have a field day. They will have a field day. Field day. Why? because the Minister of Transport has been arrested for speeding. So they, they here means the, uh, the press, okay, of a journal or- And criticize. Yeah, or a radio or a TV, they will have a field day, especially to, to in, in speaking and in saying about that or writing, okay, or writing that on, on the newspaper. They will have a field day to be due back, to be due back, to be expected to return. He's due back from work in half an hour. He's due back, okay? He is, he's expected to return yeah. from work in half an hour. In due course, have you heard about this one in due course? No. The to be due back, the first, the, the previous one. In due course, it's at some time in, in the future when the time is right. When the time is right. It's just as well, okay, let's read the, the in due course. Our rooms are far too congested and we will be addressing this problem in due course. At the, right, at the right time, at the right time. It's just as well, it's just as well. It's just as well. It, it is a good thing or a lucky thing that, uh, no, 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 it's just as well I didn't make a meat pie. 
I just found out that calling me is a vegetarian. It's just as well. It is a good thing. Only just, very nearly did not happen, or only recently used, uh, used, uh, just a moment, uh, here. Used with the present perfect tense, okay? Used with the present perfect tense. Now you can read the example. There we go. I only just got there in time. I've only just got up. I've only just got up. Very nearly, very nearly, that's the meaning. Oh, way to, way to. Way to means uh, way can be used to emphasize, okay, the word way to. to. It's way too far to walk. So you can say way too far. So right here, way is only to emphasize, okay? Way too far to walk. It's the same as if it's too far, but if we say it's way too far, it, the sentence is a little bit stronger and we are emphasizing, okay, emphasizing